Welcome to the deep abyss of YouTube, where the Fukushima particles penetrate the strongest on the ocean floor. I'm a big fan of Rad Chick, and she's been covering the sick and dying celebrities who frequently fly through the strontium sky and living with the force multiplier working in Hollywood, California. Stephen Hawking's name came up. Some people say one of the smartest people of our century. Perhaps he was, but Hawking lacked street smarts, and I believe he had become so institutionalized that he failed to see the perceived threats from nuclear disasters like Fukushima. So when I heard of his death, I wondered if it was from his long-held condition that had confined him to his wheelchair, or perhaps something else could have caused Hawking's demise. So I kept digging, until I came across a recent interview with Tyson, another well-known scientist, who had asked Hawking a very simple question in the very beginning about his favorite food, and Hawking said, oysters. Can you believe that? Oysters. Oysters are the filters of the sea. I could not believe Hawking with his superior intelligence would eat anything out of the ocean with the high levels of contamination. Now I don't know where Hawking sources his oysters, but I can tell you that 25% of the oysters harvested in America come out of a tiny town called Oysterville on the west coast of Washington State. And if you've been following my channel, I talk a lot about how Hanford has caused loads of radiation to pour into the Columbia River. And that has already been contaminated by Fukushima. So eating these oysters is like playing Russian roulette. And you know, even the Russians banned oysters eating off the west coast. And so did China shortly after 311, Fukushima meltdowns. Those are just foes. Well, South Korea, a major ally of the United States, also banned its citizens from eating shellfish off of the west coast. Now, perhaps Hawking sources some of his oysters near the UK, which is quite possible because he has a house there. But even in the UK, especially around the Windscale area, Britain's most contaminated area from a nuclear mishap. The genetic mutations in this area are quite high, even along the east coast of Ireland and the west coast of the UK. The Soviet Union dumped a few nuclear submarines in the North Atlantic. And while nuclear dumping still goes on even today, so the Atlantic is not as pristine as it were some 50 years ago. Oysters, perhaps, would be the most dangerous seafood to eat, as they are placed in ocean beds to clean water, as one oyster can filter 50 gallons of water in a few hours. So what do you think happens when you eat a dirty oyster? Your body becomes a filter and absorbs most of the nuclear waste that can go into bone marrow, cause leukemia, cause heart attacks and strokes. I'm not sure what took down Stephen Hawkins. But the oysters could very well have been a contributing factor. And if you're still eating oysters after Fukushima meltdowns, I hope you have some good life insurance to take care of your family when your time is up. In the wide-ranging interview film Last Fall in Cambridge, Tyson and Hawking discuss everything from Hawking's favorite food, oysters. Professor Hawking, thanks for agreeing to be on Star Talk. And let me just start off with uh, the first question, perhaps the most pressing question to us all. What's your favorite food? For me, it's pizza. Actually, New York pizza. Oysters. Oysters. A little slippery for me, but that's cool. <laughs> okay, how about your favorite drink? Why, why do I love oysters and why do I think that you should learn more about oysters? They're amazing creatures that have been living here for hundreds of millions of years. They evolved different uh, uh, changes and, and conditions in um, coastal waters and in oceans. They love clean water and uh, they actually also make water more clean because they can filter like this one. Look at this. This is like a big specimen, probably around four years old, maybe more, because they grow very slow here. There is not very good conditions for them to grow. But they can filter, the adult oyster can filter around 50 gallons of water. That's like your bathtub. If one can do that, just imagine if 
the shellfish that used to be here, if we could create those habitats for them, that they could improve this murky water. And you can see how the water is coming in and it has those films on a surface of oil and uh, organic matter and who knows what type of pollutants are there. A lot of wisdom and a lot of uh, geniusness is surrounding us and we can learn from them how to better use energy, how to clean the water, how to build structures that could not only benefit us but also other species. Radioactive issue, we know in uh, Vancouver a container was found uh, to contain such um, large amounts of cobalt-60 that uh, they didn't go near it, it was according to the internet. So maybe someone um, in uh, Beijing or Pyongyang um, has decided to send a, a container with a cobalt-60 bomb to um, Vancouver just to uh, make sure that uh, the West does what it wants, because of course if you detonate in Vancouver it'll just poison the whole of um, uh, North America. Um, and we know going to radioactivity again, because there's so much this week, uh, Fukushima um, has uh, allegedly released 45 tons of uh, strontium-90 uh, highly laced water into uh, the Pacific. And we know with TEPCO this could be 45,000 tons, because they're probably um, using 1,000 tons of water uh, a day to try and cool down the reactors, and now they've given up. And the well, they've also announced that uh, a, a lot of the radioactive water, Tim, with strontium-90 is not the water they're pouring over the reactors or what's left of the reactors. It's actually groundwater now that is seeping into the buildings and then wow. exiting and going right into the ocean. Wow. And the long-term effect of that will be to make the Pacific Ocean, which is a large food reserve of the um, uh, planet, um, totally uh, inedible unless you want to uh, have mutant babies um, and um, uh, uh, replicate uh, the Hills Have Eyes uh, films. Um, I, I recommend you uh, watch those films to see the effects of radiation um, on uh, humans. So all the, all the uh, mainland uh, Japs will uh, look like that and a lot of the Americans who eat um, Pacific fish and Canadians will start looking like that, um, and allegedly they become uh, cannibals. So in fact, hopefully they'll be able to get over the food deficit by um, eating the, uh, the normal non-mutant uh, humans. But it, it really is getting into apocalypse times, and one can see that the Rothschilds are spreading total anarchy across the planet. They're building these American dirty bomb reactors in order to... Uh, spread anarchy, uh, have a total economic breakdown, a total um, environmental breakdown, and a total breakdown in food supply, which of course will uh, impose a one world government, which will be the only hope right, for right. mankind after you, the Rothschilds. Yeah, you line up or you don't get, uh, you don't get food. And By it, the way, so in... you can see that even Fukushima actually fits into the model for... Yeah, they've uh, made it work. I don't, I don't believe that they caused it, but I believe they're capitalizing on it and like they do everything. They're parasitizing exactly. everything. Now, five. just to give you an idea, Tim, uh, in terms of the amount of strontium-90 leaked from the plant into the Pacific Ocean last weekend over a period of only two days, 5.8 trillion becquerels of strontium-90 is estimated to have leaked into the Pacific over a two-day period, just two days. And it's great because strontium-90 goes into your bones and gives you aplastic uh, anemia. Um, so, of course, if you uh, eat uh, tuna and Alaska salmon... No, you don't need anything out of the ocean anymore. Um, um, no more. It, it, it will, um, as I say, um, first of all, damage your um, uh, unborn child, and then it will damage you over the long term. So uh, the best hope for Iran is that the Americans eat Pacific uh, fish um, as possible. Well, they've already found cesium in it, but they won't tell you how much. And they always say, of course, it's below any dangerous limits. But the question is never answered. How did the cesium get there in the first place, even if it is on the low side? Now, the well, other thing... It might be on the low side now, but what, are, what well, about it's accumulative. 10 years of um, Fukushima uh, absolutely. fallout 
pouring into the Atlantic. Well, you continue to eat this stuff, you're going to die. That fisherman, that 23-year-old fisherman did that. He ate uh, fish uh, two, three weeks after the earthquake and tsunami. He's dead already. Lymphocytic leukemia wiped him out, gone. So exactly. quite right. And, and remember, Fukushima is going to be belching out radioactivity for uh, at least uh, 100 years. So the Pacific could be very highly contaminated uh, a decade. I, I'd say it already is. I'd say it already is. Uh, uh, which, of course, you can then see that if, you, if you've got 7 billion uh, humans at the moment and the next generation is what going to be 10 billion, the loss of the Pacific as a food supply is going to have a dramatic effect on humanity. And all the options for making more food are actually um, uh, all about um, farming krill. Let, let, me, course, tell you, let uh, me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something else before we run out of time. This is very important. They found a baby formula in Japan that had cesium in it. Well, apparently, the plant that manufactured it had uh, world-class filtration systems. Okay, including HEPA filter, uh, fiberglass filters. And all kinds of things, including dehumidifiers. When the air was in that uh, factory, it was supposed to be dehumidified and passed through HEPA filtration. The cesium apparently dissolves itself into the airborne moisture droplets, all of which cannot be removed with a, a dehumidifier. So it was coming into the plant. It wasn't that the formula itself was contaminated. It was coming into the plant through the filtration system of the buildings because it's in the moisture in the air over there. Wow. And of course, we've got Fukushima producing a constant supply of cesium for the next at least 100 years because all the, react the reactors 1 to 3 are actually fissioning now and going into the China syndrome state. Uh, we've got um, the, uh, the, the fuel pond on reactor 4 um, about, uh, about to collapse if it hasn't collapsed. Um, so we know that um, there's going to be a massive World War Three amount of radioactivity released, not only over mainland uh, Japan, but into the Pacific, which will then kill all the plans for krill production uh, to sustain the 10, 12, 15 billion so-called population of humans in the future. Well, there won't be so that what we'll many. see in the future yeah. is a massive shortage of food and food wars mm -hmm. if we don't have the Zionist... Um, um, Islamic uh, World War Three. we certainly will have food wars, and of course eventually we'll get into the race wars, which uh, if, if there are, um, uh, the Westerners, the whites are uh, starving, then of course we come into uh, eliminating what you need to eat, so that the future of the 21st century is looking really exciting, and Fukushima <laughs> actually, I think, uh, will be the pivotal event of the really. 21st century. It looks like it. Beyond, like beyond even the attack on Iran and the so-called uh, planned destruction of uh, Russia, because I think with the loss of the Sentinel, um, the, the uh, Americans have uh, really given the perfect asymmetrical weapons platform to the Chinese, Russians, Iranians, North Koreans and Syrians in order to drop the aircraft, cover the West with Cobalt-60. And of course, if the Russians or Iranians or the Syrians want to stop the attack on Syria... They just drop Cobalt-60 weapons on London or Washington, blame it on the uh, Indian pencils of Cobalt-60, and of course we no longer have uh, uh, an immediate war, which gives the Russians, Chinese, and the rest time to build a super long-range sentinels, which are the future of warfare, and also micro-weapon um, uh, systems, atomic weapons, clouds of atomic weapons in space, all right. and also drones, all floating as debris around the planet, ready to be dropped on America, Vietnam, and Europe, so the um, U.S. missile shield becomes obsolete. Well, the fertile mind of Tim Refat. By the way, I the Americans... There's a lot to talk about this week. Yeah, it? yeah. I do oh, hope yeah. the Rothschilds do some more, because I say they're building up my um, numbers on uh, Google massively uh, <laughs> by uh, all their shenanigans. All right. And thanks, this is the, my last word, thanks to the Pentagon for giving the Sentinel to um, uh, Russia, China, Iran, and Syria, and North Korea, because that is a war winner. Indeed. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Okay, good night. Tim Refat from London. Wow.